I survived 100 days in All the Mods 9. All the Mods 9 is a massive mod pack filled to the brim with almost every type of mod. The final goal for the mod pack is to make an ATM star, which requires hundreds of thousands of items and crazy machines. In these 100 days, my goal is to set up for this massive journey. Day 1. So on the first day of this journey, I admired the view real quick and then got straight to work. I used this all to mine thing uh, on a tree and then made a wooden paxel. With that done, I made a crafting table on a stick and began looking for upgrades immediately. I made sure to collect a bunch of quest rewards and actually got lucky with this uh, golden furnace. From there I went down to this ravine to grab all the exposed ores. One vein gave me 19 coal and after ultimining mining some more, I had a stack of stone. I worked my way through these quest rewards by making a stone pickaxe and a regular furnace as well. At this point I picked up any ores that looked valuable uh, just in case I needed them for later. As I set this copper to cook, I went deeper into this ravine. Here I heard some zombies and even managed to take one of those guys out. I picked up my first inferium here and delved deeper into this cave. Now at this point I wasn't very familiar with these Greg Tech ores, so I didn't pick many of them up. Anyway, after coming back and picking up my copper, I redeemed a ton more quest rewards. To help me with this journey, I also crafted an ore hammer very early. Now these things basically double your ores. Once that was done, I crafted a stone paxel and then used this Ultimine mine to make a mining tunnel. But this thing almost ruined my paxel's durability. Luckily I ended up in a cave where I finally got some iron. I doubled the ores with the hammer and went back to my little cave to smelt the iron dust. With 4 pieces of iron cooked, I grabbed them to unlock even more quest rewards. And that gave me a lot more useful things. The first thing I used the iron for was a pickaxe, which I turned into a silent gears pickaxe. This way I could repair it easier. At this point I could only get like 3 pieces of armor, but I could finally mine some of the rarer ores. The first thing I picked up was a bunch of inferium and then a ton of tin. The next day, I was still mining and picked up some gravel which was huge since I could use the flint to make some template boards. Those boards were then used to make a crude repair kit. I felt a lot more brave to explore the rest of the area so I went a little deeper into the cave. Here I fought a skeleton and noticed that these guys did a lot of damage. This iron pick from uh, Silent Gears was also magnetic which was very helpful and after mining some iron ore, I turned the corner and uh, fought a mimic. Now these mimics are awesome since they always drop artifacts. From my first one I actually got this thing called an antidote vessel. I then used the furnace in the mimics area to smelt a bunch of iron dust. Once that was done I picked up this uh, uraninite and uh, these things are going to be super important for later. As soon as the iron smelted I put a few into the repair kit and uh, completed some silent gears quests as well. I managed to pick up more iron and lapis but now I was actually short on coal. That wasn't too worrying as I picked up some redstone and gold. One of the quest rewards actually gave me a sturdy repair kit which was a pretty helpful upgrade. As I got deeper into this one large cave I made a shield and some boots and then I picked up these red hearts. With that done I broke my first spawner which was on top of a pretty good chest. I really couldn't see much in this cave and as I uh, started making my way back towards the surface I broke another spawner and the chest under this one actually had a diamond and a golden apple in it. That meant even more quest rewards and I finally found more coal which I used to smelt a lot of the stuff that I had collected. Once most of the items were cooked I went back towards a much larger cave. Here I picked up these osmium ore. Now these things are super important for mechanism but they also make some of the best gear as well. I managed to get down to like deep slate level and then also picked up a bunch of other goodies. Inside one of the chests here under a spawner I got an enchanted table and then picked up even more osmium. From there I called it quits and surfaced right back up. I spent the whole night fighting a bunch of mobs and collected some of these bounties. The string was also very helpful and uh, as I noticed these cows I actually ended up getting enough leather to finally craft a backpack and that cleared up my whole inventory. Since I had so many items I immediately got the backpack all the way up to gold tier. One of the quest rewards gave me a prudentium essence as well. With all this basic setup done my next goal was to find a permanent area to start a base of operations. Day 4 I was inside of this uh, snowy biome and I found a crashed meteor. Now this happened to be for the mod Applied Energetics 2. Now me personally I never used that mod but I grabbed everything just in case. As soon as that was done I found another one of the same crash sites but I didn't even care to break into this one. Instead I moved forward and climbed up this uh, evil craft beacon. The chest and you were great. I picked up a uh, really nice sword called the Ender and these kitty slippers which actually make uh, creepers scare to you. It took a while after that but I ended up inside of a village which had some great loot on the first chest. I picked up these digging claws and activated the waystone here. Inside of the village houses I picked up a bunch of these apotheosis gems and even found an apotheosis tower. I grabbed everything on the way up, disarmed the trap 
and picked up whatever was good. Before these days ended, I decided to cook up a uh, ton of the osmium I had. Doing that, I had enough osmium to start actually making the armor. Now, these things I think were better than diamond. I also made an osmium pickaxe as well and was out to look for a nice place once again just to start my base. Since I was near some large bodies of water, I made a boat to travel much faster. I ended up in another village and this one happened to have more artifacts inside of the chest. That wasn't even the best part since this village actually had tons of hay bales as well. I grabbed literally everything I could, activated the waystone, and traveled the whole night once again. One of these uh, magic lollipops gave me Dolphin's Grace 4, which made it fun to swim around. I even found a skeleton spawn egg in one of those uh, spawner chests and made my way into one of these uh, blue skies uh, structures. This was just a house. There was a good amount of stuff in here and I even crafted a supply camp which would help once I found a good area to settle down. Before the night ended, I started climbing a structure I had never seen before. Now from day 6 to 7, I was just in this area the whole time. I started off by uh, stealing a blast furnace and then worked my way up this structure when I heard a bunch of mobs. Luckily, I couldn't uh, really find any of them just yet. Also, the loot in the structure was actually pretty good. As I climbed up, I fought some regular mobs and then out of nowhere, this funky looking mob just came out. Now, these guys were actually pretty tough since they could tank hits and then drop potions. Slowly but surely, as I blocked off tons of areas, I cleared the mobs out and uh, could finally start breaking some of these spawners. This ended up getting me up to level 30 and filled up my backpack. This one floor, which happened to be the second last, ended up being a nightmare for me to get past. Anyway, I did finally get to the top floor and these mobs actually just ended up trapping themselves. Now with all those guys gone, I grabbed anything that looked valuable and then got out of there. Then after a whole night's journey, I actually ended up in a massive village which had a little castle by itself. But I didn't really care for that just yet, so as I moved past that, I found a perfect little area to call home. Day 8 to 9, I started off by making a hoe and cleared out a lot of the random foliage here. I forgot that I could use Ultimine for a little bit, but once I remembered, things moved even faster. To help me out, I placed down a supply camp and this place already had tons of coal and food. I picked up some of the hidden gold blocks in this camp as well and then crafted some chests to clear out my inventory. Almost every chest was basically filled, so it was actually really nice to see the entire hall. I didn't really care about organizing anything since I was going to move it to a much larger system anyway. From there, I collected even more quest rewards, lit up the surrounding areas, and started working on some functional storage. I placed down two oak iron chests and I also set down a waystone inside of the camp. Once that was done, I improved the fencing a little and I placed down the two furnaces that I had. I began cooking a lot of the ores that I turned into dust and started using some of these drawers as well. As soon as the ores cooked, I remembered that I had a ton of books, so I actually went around to see if I could find some oak trees. As soon as I found an oak tree, I noticed this gigantic structure, which I obviously had to climb. Now in here, I actually vein mined a ton of oak planks and bookshelves, plus on the top floor, I made sure to take a lot of the redstone here. All of that helped me make a bunch of bookshelves and set up an enchanting area. The first things I chose to enchant were the two pickaxes, and uh, none of them had fortune, but they did get significantly better. Not long after that, I got back up to level 30 and ended up with a protection through chest plate. So now with this starter base set up, my next goal was to start generating power. In order to do that though, I needed a ton more materials. I chose to start a mining tunnel right next to my base. Here I immediately picked up tons of osmium and then made it down to deep slate level. I eventually ended up in a cave which had a spider spawner and the chest underneath that had some really great loot. I grabbed tons more coal, repaired my pickaxe and uh, picked another direction to start uh, staircasing down to. After branching off from one more cave, I finally got down to diamond level. From here, I used my pickaxe to like ultimine as many blocks as possible and uh, clear the way. Inside of this tunnel, I fought my first apotheosis boss and this guy was only like uncommon level which was green. Uh, still, I had to block it off before taking it out. The chests inside of the boss's dungeon were pretty good. As I tunneled forward, I fought another mimic who dropped the vampiric gloves. I made sure to equip that though. In this direction, I ended up getting some really good amount of diamonds. By the time I started making my way back up, I had around 23 diamonds. As soon as I was back home, I made another copper hammer to smash down all the ores. While everything was cooking, I grabbed this hopper botany pot that I got as a quest reward and used it to make a little tree farm on top of a drawer. I ended up making a slight mistake by swapping drawers, but I eventually fixed that later. Day 11, I enchanted my leggings which had protection 3 and put a few items into the drawers I had set up. From there, I cleared out my backpack, made a bunch of charcoal and used one chest for all these uh, apotheosis gems. With all the housekeeping done, I actually uh, made these iron to gold chest upgrades and used them on all the sophisticated storage chests. Later on, I actually got sharpness 3 on my sword and then made a diamond pickaxe to complete a lot of the basic quests. 
the 12 to 13 to really get this basic power generation started i needed clay for that i searched the river next to my base and uh in the first direction i went i couldn't find anything so i came back home to claim the chunks around me I didn't force load the chunks just yet. After that, I made another drawer and finally found some clay. Those were used to make more hopper botany pots so I could start growing some uh, mystical agriculture seeds. I had to run around and look for poppies so I could get red dye though. This took a surprising amount of time, but I did finally make the infusion altar and only have like one pedestal. I needed like seven more. While fighting mobs at night, I picked up a ton of bones which I could use to grow some flowers. In the morning, I got the red dyes I needed and checked out this large village in front of my base. I ignored this place the first time since I was in a rush, but I went through a lot of these people's houses and one of these houses was actually a beekeepers where I snatched up a bunch of candles and honey blocks. With all that, I came back home and sprinkled the candles around my enchantment table to increase, I think, the Eterna. I even put these mob heads around this setup, but I forgot that that wasn't helpful just yet. Anyway, I was able to set up the infusion ritual and use up all of my Prudentium essence to make coal seeds. Now, just for very early power generation, I had a solid source of coal coming from this hopper botany pot. With all that done, I actually made some of this uh, dielectric paste and started working on crafting this furnator from the power mod. This thing just needs coal to generate power and it will be plenty for the beginning. To get it started though, I made some charcoal, but I realized I had more than enough materials to upgrade the furnator to the next tier. My next order of business was to start working on a jetpack as well. For that, I could only craft a uh, few of the items for now. At this point, I had used a slash set home on my base so I could teleport back every once in a while. I also really wanted to upgrade a bunch of stuff, so I started off by making an energizing orb. Using these energy cables, I was able to set up these uh, energizing rods as well. This setup actually took a lot of uh, tinkering to get right. To upgrade the rods, I would need quartz, and that's just not available for me right now. Eventually, I settled on a design that had the energy cables underground, but I kept putting in the wrong recipe. Once I figured out how to make these energized steel, I finally started getting them generated. I made about 10 of those and used all that to upgrade the furnator once more. This even left me with a bunch of items to spare. The next upgrade was blazing tier, which of course needs blaze rods. Now again, with all that set up, I focused back on making a wooden jetpack. This thing wasn't very expensive, but it was super tedious to craft. Once all that was crafted, I realized I couldn't even charge it inside of the furnator. So this jetpack was useless for now. I did manage to get a factory upgrade for the furnace from a quest reward, so I turned the gold furnace into one that needed power. From there, in order to start using the jetpack, I needed an item called a player transmitter. I ended up actually getting confused, so I made an energy cell instead, and of course, this thing didn't charge a jetpack either. At 15 to 16, since I had some spare ender pearls, I made this thing called an aerial pearl. Now, I needed to use this on a zombie to be able to craft a player transmitter. To do that, I hopped back down into the mines and veered off in a different direction where I heard mobs. I mined a bunch of ores, fought off some spiders, and broke a spawner as well. Before a blood moon happened, I actually managed to click the pearl on a zombie, so with that, I was ready to leave whenever. But since I really didn't want to fight a bunch of mobs, I decided to stay down in the caves to stock up on materials. I would need tons of redstone, iron, and coal anyway. During this journey, I fought another mimic down here who dropped this uh, lucky scarf, which applies an extra level of fortune to every mined block. I spent the whole night grabbing whatever I could and filled up a good portion of my backpack. Once the blood moon set, I actually fell into a much larger cave where I almost died. This is when I used the slash home command to warp right back to my base. From here, I used my new furnace to cook up all these ores and I made a speed upgrade, but that basically drained all of my power. While everything was cooking, I also crafted the player transmitter and set that up right above the furnator. I still needed the binding card and for that, I was actually missing some rotten flesh. In the meantime, while I was waiting for zombies to spawn, I made an item pipe and connected another hopper botany pot to the coal farm. I had to do the ritual for coal seeds once again, but it was worth it since the production was basically double. Day 17, I had just enough items to craft this binding card, but to make it dimensional, I would need to use it on an enderman. I skipped that for now and finally had a functioning jetpack that I couldn't figure out the hotkeys for just yet. At this point, some of my main chests were filled up, so I would have to start working on storage solutions soon. Then once I set up my hotkeys properly, I unlocked flight. This jetpack was pretty bad, but trust me, once you start upgrading it, things get pretty ridiculous. Since coal energy wasn't cutting it anymore, I wanted to work up through this mechanism quest line. Now, I actually really like this mod, so I was very excited to start. The first thing I did was craft a uh, heat generator to move things along, and then I actually made a very important machine, like this metallurgic infuser. Now, this machine is needed for almost everything inside of mechanism. I picked up some alloys from quest rewards and used redstone to uh, power this infuser temporarily. 
I needed a bunch more of this infused alloy for the wind generators. After burning through a bunch of materials, I finally got all the things I needed. I had to use a ton of iron and osmium as well. This allowed me to craft my first wind generator, but I was getting bombarded by phantoms so I went to sleep. Day 18 and 19, I broke all the birch fences around the perimeter of my base and expanded that area using all the oak that I had. I had to clear out a bunch of the dirt to make things look nicer, and then I started putting these stairs to help me get up to the second level. With the area expanded, I moved some drawers since the items don't fall out, but I uh, kept the chest in the original area. I used the hill behind the base to place down a wind generator and hooked that up right to the furnace. After making these cables, the speed upgrade on the furnace blew through the power generator by the windmill, so I had to uh, uh, get rid of that for a bit. Luckily, since I had the infuser hooked up now, I could actually make more wind generators. Still though, the furnace needed much more power. In the meantime, I finally smartened up and used a 2x2 drawer on this tree farm so I could grab all the items that it farmed. Then I had the bright idea to actually make an advanced solar generator. This thing was pretty expensive, so I grabbed a bunch of my iron and redstone. Once that was done, I infused a bunch of ingots to make alloys and then grabbed tons of sand. As soon as things started cooking, I was able to start making a bunch of solar panels. I turned those panels into solar generators and I would need a couple of these generators to make the advanced one. This ended up taking a bit of time, but it was worth it since this should really generate some good power. I hooked it up next to the windmill and also put an energy cell there to store any leftover power. Once that was done, I used some infused alloy to upgrade these cables. As I was waiting for the morning, I did some light decorating and started grabbing a bunch of items so I could upgrade my jetpack. This time, the upgrading didn't take as long and I ended up with a stone jetpack, which was much faster and held five times the power. I also moved the player transmitter to the bigger machines and saw that I was producing 94 FE per tick from the advanced solar generator alone. That was actually really solid for now. With that done, I went right back down to the mines and here I grabbed a bunch of gold, iron, and osmium. I made sure to uh, grab a bunch of obsidian as well and then use this giant tunnel to look for redstone. When I got like three and a half stacks of redstone and a few more obsidian, I decided to warp back home. I crushed a bunch of ores that I had collected and then smelt those. After that, I used the energizing orb to double this uraninite as well. Now I could finally fit the speed upgrade back into the furnace and this thing would help me cook the ores much faster. In order to upgrade the power generation, I had to go to the nether. So I made sure to grab all the items necessary for that while clearing out my backpack. Day 21 to day 22, I made a bunch of buckets, set up another portal and hopped into it. I got lucky and spawned right in front of a waystone. The goal in this dimension was simple, get some quartz and a bunch of lava. While I was there though, I picked up this crimson ore and tons of gold as well. I also noticed that my jetpack wasn't recharging, so I knew I kind of messed up on the chunk loading a little. In one of these basalt biomes, I fought these magma cubes and had a magic lollipop drop. This one actually gave me 5 minutes of flight, so I turned my jetpack off and uh, just went in a random direction. There happened to be a waystone just laying there, so I snatched that up and then ended up on top of a nether temple. These endermen over here that attacked me just happened to be super strong. So I did use that waystone to go back home and then grab a binding card. But when I tried to use it on these endermen, it just didn't work. Anyway, I broke into the temple and looted the chest here. I picked up some really good artifacts and a bunch of really nice loot like this epic level leggings. After that, I used the last few minutes of flight to fly further away. From there, I swapped back to the jetpack and picked up some glowstone as well. Once that was done, I finally found a fortress so I could uh, now farm a few blaze rods. Through a bunch of quest rewards and these uh, reliquary drops, I ended up getting a decent amount. I didn't have a shield at this point, so I came back home before I took a ton more damage. With all that done, I crafted some stack upgrades and put them on the chest. Then since I had tons of iron, I decided to start working on an iron jetpack. And once again, these recipes are just tedious. In the middle of that, I actually got a fortune 2 pickaxe and smelt the ores I got from the nether. I had to quickly hop back into the nether to grab more buckets of lava. With that done, I crafted an osmium shield and then some templar boards by mistake because I actually meant to craft this uh, blueprint instead. The next morning, I ended up with a ton of blueprint templates which I could uh, keep in this one book. I also decided to just complete a chunk of the quests for uh, silent gear by making a pickaxe head. The item I was actually planning on using was a blaze rod and osmium paxel. I upgraded the tip of the paxel by using diamonds and this thing was actually pretty good for now. With all that done, I made my way towards the village right in front of me and snatched up some goodies, like this anvil first. Once that was done, I got an iron jetpack, which happened to hold eight times more power than the previous one. That night, I made these dark marbles 
and combined a few books together to put on my fortune pickaxe. Once that was done, I noticed that this crimson iron was a tier 3 metal, so I used that for my repair kit instead of diamonds since it was easier to get. As the night dragged on, I reorganized the bookshelf so I could fit more mob heads and candles on there. Then I had to remake some armor. Finally, as it was turning into morning, I found an enderman who I used this binding card on to get me a dimensional card. Day 24, I grabbed all the items I had for power and used those buckets of lava to make more dielectric paste. With that, I started crafting some capacitors. The thing I was actually looking to make was a reactor from the power mod. And these things don't actually blow up and they're super easy to maintain. Since this thing needed so many items, I really had to go mining. But now that I had blaze powder, I could make a bunch of charms which showed me where the ores were. I cleared out some area in my base while things were cooking and then made a mortar, pestle, and some ender powder. The three items I needed right now were iron, coal, and redstone, so I made powder forms of all of those. Before cooking them, I used the rest of my ender pearls to craft a small enderman gate pearl. Now, I didn't realize how strong these mobs are going to be when I started the waves. The first one was pretty simple, but the second one was immediately harder since these uh, endermen's health got significantly higher. I managed to get up to wave three, but this is when I was just hiding on some trees. Even Eventually the timer ran out, but I did end up getting 10 pearls. For the rest of the night, I made the calcinated version of the ore powders and then brewed some mundane potions. Once that was done, I ended up getting an iron side charm, then a coal side charm, and finally a redstone side charm. Since I was already mining, I decided to go make a charm of gold side as well. As soon as I got underground and popped this iron side charm, my screen basically lit up. I dug over to as many as I could and used this fortune 2 pickaxe on it. From just a minute or two, I ended up with a stack and a half of iron ore, which I could also double. Once I racked up the two stacks, I switched over to gold site, and uh, while I was digging towards the gold, I picked up some dark gems as well. I was in the mines for a good amount of time and got a really good amount of stuff. Then there happened to be a blood moon, so I stayed in the mines a little longer, and I swapped to the redstone site charm, and stocked up on that as well. Eventually, I hit a jackpot for redstone and found this huge Greg Tech ores deposit. Now all these things can be smelt down to redstone. I ended up vein mining 6 stacks of those ores. On the way up, I started looking for coal and this one was actually very rare. Nonetheless, my backpack was getting filled up and I warped back to my base. Here I put all the inferium away and started cooking the ores I couldn't crush. I even made a blasting upgrade and the furnace was uh, still holding strong with power. Then I crafted a ton of copper hammers to make these iron dust. I also had to put like a hundred blocks of redstone away as well. Before cooking up the iron, I energized the uraninite to double the output and then uh, actually used my brain to set up an automatic furnace. So with everything automated, I placed another hundred redstone blocks away and uh, had to actually get rid of the speed upgrade since it was becoming dark and I was running low on power. That night, I supplemented the furnace with the furnator and used an absolute ton of items to craft the starter reactor. They all needed 36 blocks to be fully activated. Once I got all the necessary items, I placed the reactor down right next to my house. And uh, since this one doesn't explode, I wasn't even worried at all. So in order to power this reactor, I would need some more items. So but before I had this thing up and running, I decided to upgrade it to the basic tier. Once again, it wasn't super expensive, but it was very tedious. So this version uh, generated 1000 FE per tick, which would be huge for now. I got it up and running by feeding it coal, redstone, and uraninite. The things I was missing were the coolants. The liquid coolant was easy, it was just water, but the solid coolant is trickier. I really wanted dry ice, but that would take like a whole process. With this generator up and running, I teleported to a waste stone near some snow and collected stacks on stacks of snowballs. I used all those to make close to two stacks of snow blocks and then use that as a solid coolant for now. Things are running perfectly. After that, I wanted to make wireless power to make use of the reactor. So I grabbed some stacks of redstone, one obsidian and made my way down towards bedrock. When I got down there, I threw some redstone on top of the bedrock, put one obsidian above that and just right clicked. This gave me tons of flux dust. Using that as some of the ender pearls I had, I could now craft a flux plug and tons of flux points. The plug receives the energy, so I put that on my reactor, and then the points can just go anywhere that needs power. I made sure to uh, label my plugs and points since they can all get really confusing later. With the network set up, my furnace, infuser, and player transmitter were all getting powered by the reactor. Before the night ended, I moved the wind and advanced solar generation behind the reactor and then picked up this thing called an essence of undeath, which I used to make a grave. And this thing was just to help with disenchanting. Day 28 to day 29, I moved the drawers around to the sides of this base so I could potentially use the center for a storage system. In the meanwhile, I infused a bunch of iron to get these alloys. I ended up using those alloys to upgrade the cables. From there, I spread these cables around to make an area for the energizing orb. 
I upgraded the energizing rods as well to basic tier and then collected a ton of quest rewards. Since I now had a good amount of power, I energized blocks of iron and gold to speed up the upgrade process. This was significantly faster and I was immediately able to upgrade the rods up to hardened tier. This made my job of upgrading the reactor even easier, but I actually had to go and grab a ton of lava from the nether first. As soon as I came back, I remembered to force load these chunks that I had claimed. Then a wandering trader spawned, and these guys were super annoying, but I got a really good trade from this guy, and it was called the Tome of Enchanting, which refreshes your enchants by using some XP. I tried it out and I was looking for armor enchants and it worked like a charm. I ended up with some really good osmium boots and unbreaking 3 on my leggings. Since those leggings had a socket, I put a gem in that increases the protection level. Well back to the main task, I made more energized steel which made more hardened capacitors and that allowed me to start upgrading the reactor in uh, groups of 4. It took a little bit but I got the hardened reactor which generates a 2.5 thousand FE per tick. Once that was done, I also made a heart necklace and I really couldn't do anything with that just yet. After that, I enchanted my Paxil which had like nature's mend. My new limiting factor for the reactor was the uraninite. But before focusing on that, I really wanted a new storage system. To help me with that, I actually made an infusion crystal, which allowed me to upgrade my essences. All that also allowed me to make a stack of prudentium, and then I smelt some quartz for silicon. The next morning, I did a ritual for silicon seeds, and these are essential for storage parts. I made two of those seeds, and since I didn't need coal for power generation anymore, I put those silicon seeds into those hopper botany pots instead. I also decided to upgrade the Prudentium to Tertium just so I could get better farmland. I actually needed a few more seeds like Uraninite and Ice. To prepare for the Ice one, I made Brass Ingots. This was because when you use brass, you end up getting a uh, silk touch quality on your items. Since I had a bunch of extra useless gems, I crushed those and then used that to make a salvaging table. For now, this thing didn't do anything too good since it needs another item to function properly. That item was called a reforging table and I could only craft a simple one first. The only thing I was missing was obsidian at this point. I decided to venture out and look for a lava pool. During this little uh, side mission, I broke a spawner and looted the chest underneath. And after that, I took all the loot from one of those apotheosis towers. Once I found a lava pool, I managed to get about a stack of obsidian and use all of that to craft a reforging table. With these, I could salvage materials from different gears and use all that to put an affix on any gear that I wanted. I got an uncommon affix on my chest plate and helmet, which increased my hearts. Day 31 to day 32, now to get started on refined storage, I first crafted some quartz enriched iron. With that, I made a machine casing and then these processor bindings. The controller only took one advanced processor, so it wasn't really expensive at all. With that, I expanded my cables and placed down the controller right on the center. Next up, I needed this thing called a disk drive. These were very basic things to make, and for right now, they're pretty cheap. It's only when you start going through the upgrades that a lot of the stuff becomes unbelievably expensive. To make things look a lot better, I moved the cables down a level and then put these glass slabs over the top of them. Once that was done, I connected the disk drive to the system. I set the priority of the disk drive to be low since I wanted to use a lot of drawers eventually. Now in this drive is where all the storage parts go to and those storage parts end up holding all the items. I had enough to craft a storage disk and uh, got a 1k storage part as a reward. Since everything was pretty cheap, I decided to work my way up to a 4k storage part right away. I went even further and decided to go all the way up to the 16k storage part. With that crafted, I combined it with the storage disk and put that into the drive. To have all the basics of this system set up, I needed a crafting grid which would allow me to actually see the items I put in here. This one was slightly more expensive, so I uh, crafted a nature's compass to go out and look for swamps. I really needed slime balls. I made a magnet just in case and flew over to a mangrove swamp since it was pretty close, but I didn't know if these ones actually spawned slimes. Along the way, I grabbed everything from a tower and flew past some really cool volcanic biome. When I got to the mangrove swamp, I didn't see any mobs at all, so I set the compass to find me a regular swamp instead. There happened to be a jungle pyramid looking thing here, and in one of the rooms, I found this ring panel, which I had no clue what to do with, so I just broke it and took it with me. Inside of another room, there were a bunch of chests, all with some really good loot. The best item for me was this artifact that gave me immunity to fall damage. I made sure to equip that right away. Other than that, I grabbed a ton of stone bricks and found a witch's hut, which actually had some slime balls that ended up being more than enough. So I warped back home and I spent the entire night using the processor bindings to craft all the types of processors I would need for this crafting grid. Once morning hit, I was able to make a regular grid and then upgraded it to a crafting grid right away. That was finally the last piece to get this system up and running. With this, I could start crafting items inside of the system. 
My next task, which was actually pretty satisfying, was to move all the items from the chests into the system. After clearing out most of my chests, it turns out that I had 3.4k items. From there, I also started moving these drawers closer to the main system. Then to complete that uh, refined storage main quest line, I crafted this wireless transmitter which would be used much much later. To make life easier, I wanted to get auto crafting set up as quickly as possible. For that, I smelled tons of glass and then made these patterns. With those patterns, I started work on crafting this pattern grid. The grid was used to make the recipes which you then put into crafters to do all the heavy lifting. Once that was connected and set up to the system, I made my first crafter. Get used to seeing a lot of these things because they're like lifesavers. Right away, I began using these patterns to start making recipes. First of which, of course, was actually the recipe for a pattern itself. With that done, I upgraded the crafter and made all the recipes for all the different types of processors, processor bindings, silicon, and quartz enriched iron. Every single one of those items were needed for everything within refined storage. I used the autocraft for the first time by control clicking and things were working. They were slow for now, but they worked. Doing that, I was easily able to upgrade the crafter once more. Day 35 to day 36, I crafted three range upgrades, which I kept inside of the wireless transmitter for later. Then out of nowhere, a grave guardian spawned, but this dude was chilling, so I had no problem. My next order of business was actually making a chunk destroyer so I could rack up items, but this thing was super expensive. First, I needed some all the modium nuggets and then some nether stars as well. To test my luck, I used a nature's compass to help me find a deep dark biome. Then I crafted a warp stone just in case of emergencies and I was out. I looted some chests along the way out in the ocean, explored some large villages and grabbed a bunch of food. During the journey, there also happened to be a glacial chasm. So I grabbed tons more snow to make snow blocks for the reactor. I even found what looked like a boss tower, but this place only had a chest though. The chest did have packed ice and some diamonds, which are pretty nice. From there, I found a gigantic cave, which I assumed led down to the deep dark. Turns out I was right, and I broke a bunch of these skulk blocks, hoping to get lucky. In all the mods 8, Osmium armor was more than enough to fight a warden, but here, in ATM 9, I was very wrong to assume that. As I dug deeper, I ended up inside of a much larger deep dark area, and here a warden spawned. At first I was chilling since this guy wasn't doing its ranged attack, so I even managed to get some hits off. Then everything changed after that first attack that knocked off like 8 of my hearts. I panicked and warped home. That was a humbling moment, so I knew I had to be better prepared now. I started off by enchanting this new sword and got really lucky on the enchants. Then once again, I cleared out my inventory and went right back to the deep dark. This time I tried to be careful, but this dude hit me through some blocks and scared me off again. So I just set up a waste on top of the cave. With that done, I came home to crush a bunch of gems and put an affix on my sword, which was really good now. I also was able to get an affix on my boots and uh, socketed it up the sword. The grave I had set up actually ended up having a soul, so I crafted a book of disenchantment and extracted all the enchants off of an old sword. From there, I moved the grave away from anything important and upgraded to a diamond furnace. Day 37 and day 38, since I really needed new equipment, I looked at some of the upgraded bookshelves. Then after that, because I already had most of the items, I upgraded the player transmitter up to the hardened tier. I also had one wither bone, so I was able to craft one heart canister, which I put into a heart amulet, and of course that gave me one extra heart only. With that done, I just needed to find a single ancient debris so I could make a charm with it. Because of that, I actually needed to be inside of the nether, and here I decided to farm blaze rods as well. I turned the magnet on and farmed a few blazes. From there, I even fought an epic level uh, apotheosis boss and made it to the center of the fortress. In here, I looted the chest which had nether warts and started climbing up to the top. The chest up here had so many armor and weapons that I could salvage, so I stocked up on as much of these as I could. I also managed to fight even more blazes and wither skeletons, and from some of these quest rewards, I got uh, wither skeleton heads. Once I cleared that fortress, I actually found a bastion. I hovered around the outside, taking out the piglins, and then looted the chest inside which had some really good loot. This bastion ended up being much larger than I realized, so I went over to the giant center room. I slowly made my way down there to take out the magma cubes and then broke their spawners. With that taken care of, I grabbed all the gold blocks and looted the main chest. Now this chest had one ancient debris and one of these uh, netherite smithing templates. I came home and made calcinated netherite powder immediately. Once the potion brewed, I made a charm of nether sight. After that, I salvaged all the gear I collected and got a ton of materials that I could use. I had to crush a bunch of gems first though. I could now get rare level affixes on my gear. I settled on reforging this new set of diamond armor that I just made, since it was going to be upgraded to netherite eventually. As for some housekeeping though, I made these configurators and linking tools so I could hook up all these drawers later. Then I put down some recipes for storage parts. 
I wanted another upgrade. I just had to smelt some processors manually because I hadn't automated the furnace yet. With all that smelting done, I was able to make a 64K storage part. I put that into a disk drive and started crafting a disk manipulator. The next part is a little embarrassing because I forgot how to use this thing, but I eventually figured it out. Turns out the storage disk that you want needs to be put inside of the disk drive and the one you don't need needs to be part of the manipulator. This process was super slow, so I would need speed upgrades for the future. This time though, I decided to go look for ancient debris while all that was going on. The GEI said Y equals 15 has the best chance, so I popped the charm, and when I got down there, I started mining as much ancient debris as possible. So these guys were actually very spread apart, so I couldn't hit the jackpot like I did with the overworld ores. I also had to be very careful of lava, but I ended up with 25 ancient debris. Once I cooked all of that, I made four netherite ingots, and then made a slight mistake by not crafting a bunch more smithing templates. That basically meant I could only make three pieces of netherite gear, and since I used up the templates, I couldn't duplicate it anymore. I reforged my boots, which happen to be very good now, and with that done, I crafted a speed upgrade to make the disc manipulator faster. At this point, another soul had hit one of the graves, which allowed me to disenchant an old set of armor. Then I put a gem on my helmet, which increased my attack damage, and used some good books on that helmet as well. Next up, I was able to disenchant my chest plate, and then I got my old storage part back. Before the night ended, I even got to enchant my leggings as well. Day 41, because I needed more of the smithing templates, uh, they also happened to need diamonds, so I had to go down to the mines to uh, look for those. I got distracted by an epic apotheosis boss chamber, and I spent a good amount of time trying to defeat this guy. Once the boss was taken care of, I got an epic yeti's head. The chest happened to be good down here, and I fell into a much larger cave after that. In here, I picked up a good amount of diamonds and uh, diamond horse armor, which I could salvage. Once I killed 50 skeletons, I completed a quest, and uh, from there, I decided to come home. As I collected my rewards, I got a few lily pads of fertility. I didn't know if these worked on those hopper botany pots, but I put them on the corner next to my drawers anyway. As things were smelting, I energized a uraninite and salvaged all the horse armor, which gave me a ton of diamonds. Then I got super lucky as a wandering trader spawned, and this guy had the perfect sword available for trade. As it became morning, I grabbed all my emeralds and made a diamond sword so I could get this stacked sword from the trader. I immediately reforged it and uh, found that I messed up by not keeping one of those uh, smithing upgrades really bad. So in order to get more of those upgrades, I ate all these uh, magic lollipops, which one of them gave me flight, and I hopped back into the nether with that. There happened to be another bastion right in front of the spawn, so I very carefully looted all the chests. After taking out a ton of piglins, I got another smithing upgrade. From there, I picked up tons of glowstone and made my way to the center of this bastion. After picking up all the gold, I looted the chests, which had some great artifacts and one more smithing upgrade. This golden hook artifact increases the um, XP dropped by creatures, so I equipped that right away. Once I came home, I made more smithing upgrades and upgraded the chest plate and sword all the way up to netherite. After reorganizing my artifacts, I made a coating blueprint and uh, crafted this netherite coating, which I put on my Paxel. This thing allowed me to mine all the modium ores now. With all that done, I got some great enchants on my chest plate and was able to reforge that as well. Day 43 to day 44, now with all that upgrading, it was time for the moment of truth. I made sure to get some potions of night vision and then went right back into the deep dark. Before going in to fight the warden though, I saw tons of slime spawning, so I used this looting sword and picked up tons of slime balls. Then I ate an apple, which got me two more hearts from Spice of Life. I made sure to eat the golden apples as well, and then got back to where I first saw a warden. I started off by getting rid of uh, as much skulk veins and blocks as I possibly could. That was just in case there were any ores hiding underneath. Eventually, a warden spawned, and I was shooting it with his enchanted bow that I picked up. Turns out it was still doing tons of damage because uh, one of these guys' attacks still managed to tear through my hearts like it was nothing. I had to eat two more golden apples, but eventually ran into some corner. Luckily, this place had one all the modium ore, which would be all that I needed, so once I picked that up, I got out of there and then crushed the ore to get two dust. Because of that, I now had two Aldemodium ingots. The most important thing I had to use this for was a teleport pad and the workbench. Once I crafted those two, I placed the workbench on some cables and looked through the recipes for the quarries. Turns out I would need tons of sand and cacti, so I used the nature's compass to find me a desert biome. Along the way, I raided this illager's tower which had emerald blocks, and then in the desert, I grabbed all the cacti I could find. With that done, I came home and uh, farmed the cactus using a hopper botany pot. Then I found a much better way to disenchant items, and that was just to use an obsidian block and an anvil. All you had to do was throw an item down, and then some books, and then crush those together with an anvil. As everything was growing, I went to the mining dimension real quick to place a waypoint down. 
In the morning, I also crafted a brass pickaxe, which had the silk touch quality. Now to automate the reactor, I needed a bunch of seeds from mystical agriculture. And since I had some lily pads of fertility, I decided to make a nice nine by nine farm. I made it one level higher than the ground, put stairs around the perimeter, and then crafted a harvesting pylon to help automate the whole thing. Once that was ready, I put the lily pad of fertility down and then the harvesting pylon, which had a hole inside. The first thing I started farming was just uh, Inferium Seeds, since Inferium Essence was going to be essential. I made an Ender Chest and put that on top of the pylon to collect all the items. To get that into my system, I had to make another Ender Chest and then hook that up using an Importer. The farm itself was weird, I had to tinker around with the Lily Pad of Fertility a lot. Anyway, with the basic farm set up and Inferium Essence growing, I crafted a controller that linked up all the drawers I had to it. With that done, I made this thing called an external storage and hooked that up to this drawer controller. I then connected that to the main system and could now access all of these drawers from my crafting grid. With that done, I pushed some of these fences back and then set the priority for the drawer controller to be higher than everything else so items would fill up the drawers first. I also made some covers for the cables and then put more Inferium seeds into the auto farm. This time, I actually moved the seeds closer to the lily pad as well. Connected to the drawers, I put these uh, compacting drawers down and these things would be very helpful for iron, gold and coal since I would need tons of different versions of those. Before the night ended, I actually used the brass pickaxe to grab a bunch of ice and did the ritual for ice seeds. I made recipes for all the ice variants and uh, basically grew those seeds using hopper botany pots. Day 47 to day 49, I was sick of smelting things manually, so I was looking to automate the furnace. Turns out I was missing a lot of iron, so I went underground to grab a bunch of that. I also grabbed some amethyst shards while I was here, and then made a bunch of brass hammers to smash all the iron ore. With those cooked up, I brought the furnace closer to the storage system and threw a crafter on top of the furnace. I made an importer to bring all the cooked items back into the system, and this thing was already set up just like that. The only thing I had to do now was to put the cooking recipes into the crafter above the furnace. I started off with all the cooked processor recipes so I could make storage parts much quicker. With that done, I wanted all the modium dust, so I hopped into the nether to grab more ender pearls. I fought a ton of these weird endermen in a warped forest and ended up in a nether pyramid which had some decent loot. On top of this pyramid was a fortress which had a waystone just laying there so I activated that. Since I was here, I farmed a ton of blazes with my looting sword and managed to get a good amount of rods. I even stole a blaze spawner with my brass pickaxe. After looting the top of the fortress, I decided to come home. Here I disenchanted a bunch of items and uh, salvaged the rest. With all that done, I made all the modium powder and calcinated that as well. I ended up getting an all the modium sight charm. So to upgrade my power generation, I needed to automate the energizing orb. For that, I made an iron crafter and tried really hard to set this up right the first time. I had the basics set up to start and uh, covered a lot of the cables up. So things were working but it only managed to do the recipe once. I realized I hadn't set up the redstone signal just yet. I even crafted a crafting monitor to see what the issue was. This entire process actually took a pretty long time since I had to do some research, but by nighttime, I had this entire energizing orb automated. I put more recipes into the crafter and don't worry, this little redstone thing ends up becoming much better later. Anyway, I was getting those blazing crystals automatically, which was awesome. To end the night off, I set up recipes for the blazing reactor. Day 50 to day 51, I uh, asked the crafter to make 36 reactor blocks to see what I was missing. Turns out I needed more coal and blaze rods. For the coal, I was just having issues with my drawers, so I kept breaking and placing down these things over and over again. I got it fixed eventually and was just missing blaze rods. To farm all that, I went over to the fortress and had this quartzite thing from a magic lollipop which was super annoying. With all that ready, I ended up making a little bit of a mistake by taking down the reactor a little too early. So while things were crafting, I was constantly low on power. I had to rely on the furinator and that made the whole process take so much longer. So I actually forgot to record the rest of day 51, but only like two things happened. One, the blazing reactor was set up and running. And two, I started using dry ice. I had the recipe in the energizing orb and all the recipes to make the blue ice inside of the regular crafter. This was by far the best solid cool I also had those ice seeds on two hopper botany pots and for some reason I just couldn't get this drawer controller to connect to the main system. I'm not even joking, I spent the entire day troubleshooting the controller and it finally worked after 10 minutes. Now I could fully automate the dry ice process as well. My next goal was to get this chunk destroyer set up so that I could basically get infinite items. I put down everything needed for a quarry and was only missing diamonds. To get that I decided to use the mining dimension. 
I started the mine near the pad and was just looking for diamonds to start off. Somehow I managed to stock up on everything but that. So I decided to make a charm of diamond site. Before hopping back in, I made a compacted drawer for copper as well. Then with this charm of diamond site, I started tearing through the cave. Once I got close to three stacks of diamonds, I switched to uh, looking for some all the modium ore and then managed to get like five more ores. When I came back home, I got the first of the three quarries needed. Now I was actually short on ender pearls instead. Day 54 to day 55, I actually set up one quarry in the mining dimension and it was working pretty well. I put a diamond chest on top and things were very slow, but it worked, which is cool. I force loaded some chunks, put some stack upgrades in the chest and then hopped into the nether to grab tons of ender pearls. I managed to get uh, one extra ancient debris in here as well. Before leaving the nether, I placed down my blaze spawner in a flat area to form a ton of rods. Doing this, I got 58 more blaze rods. I left after uh, picking up my spawner and then made two more quarries. Next up was the quarry pump module, which needed a bunch of cacti. To get the 500 plus glass needed, I shred through this beach and got almost 17 stacks of sand. Since I had an automatic furnace, I could just set it to cook and not have to do anything. In the meantime, I found out that uh, chunk loading these areas kind of breaks the quarry and that was a little bit of an issue so I had to reset it. From there, I made more dry ice for the reactor and finally made the pump module. Once that was done, I also made three flexible markers. Now the only things I didn't have were two nether stars and a dragon head. Day 56 to day 58, I had to hop in the nether once more for ender pearls. This was because I really didn't want to make a structure compass just yet. I came back home to make some eyes of ender and also finally uh, made a feeding upgrade. With that done, I went to find a stronghold. During this journey, I looted some apotheosis towers and at night I finally found where those eyes of enders were leading me. So I dug down until I hit some stone bricks. Now since this structure was part of the better dungeons mod, I expected to be stuck here for hours, but I noticed a portal room on my minimap so I broke into it immediately. I also broke the silverfish spawner and placed the waystone down. With that done, I placed the eyes of ender into the portals to activate the whole thing. I had to come back home quickly to craft a ton of arrows and enchant another bow. This one ended up having poison tip, so I combined that with my old one. After that, I was ready to take the ender dragon out. Once I spawned it, I was actually amazed by how good the main island looked. And as soon as the dragon spawned, I was able to fly around and destroy most of the end crystals. Once they all exploded, I uh, realized I forgot to bring some glass bottles. So I teleported back to grab a bunch of those. From there, I hopped back into the end and started taking shots of the dragon with my bow. I also filled up almost all of those glass bottles. I ended up doing tons of damage to this guy, but one of my chest plate enchantments were not good for this fight. Because this repellent enchant was just pushing the dragon away, I wasn't able to hit it too much with my sword. Regardless, I took it out anyway, and I picked up a ton of the dragon scales and the levels. I was up to level 89, and I farmed a bit of the ender pearls here. But these guys were really strong, so my armor was in bad shape. After picking up the dragon egg, I took the gateway to the end islands and uh, found a tower with the waystone. In front of that tower was an actual cataclysm boss arena. I didn't want to fight that boss just yet, but I did loot some of the structures in the area which were really good. Past that place, I found two other structures. One was called an aviary which was a pretty late game structure and the other one was the end city. I went to the end city first to grab the dragon head and the elytra wing. Once the end ship was looted, I made my way inside of the aviary to grab as many of the chests as possible and there happened to be a ton of good stuff. My backpack got filled up so I came back home. Since I had a stack of ender pearls now from all the farming, the only thing missing for the chunk destroyer were the nether stars and the diamond blocks. I ended up using the charm of diamond site one more time that night to check the diamond blocks off the list. At 59 to 61, the quarry in the mining dimension was actually doing a pretty decent job. Anyway, I also worked on making more seeds in the future, so I used an infusion crystal to upgrade a lot of my inferium. I used some of the prudentium essence to upgrade the farmland as well, and then made all the recipes for a niotic reactor. This chunk destroyer absolutely eats up power, so I would need some huge power generators. I really quickly went to the nether to grab some ancient debris and farm a bunch more blaze rods. My armor was also getting kind of busted, so I was very careful fighting these blazes. With all those items, I let the autocraft produce 36 niotic capacitors. This process took some time, so as that was going on, I decided to make this top area look a little more industrial. So I replaced all the dirt with stone bricks. I even went through the same areas and put uh, some cracked stone bricks in instead. I just couldn't touch the energizing orb just yet. The next thing I crafted was an XP drain singularity tank, which I used to get a bottle of enchanting, and that was for an experience crystal. This little thing would be very helpful because you can get XP from the chunk destroyer. As the night ended, the capacitors were all crafted, so I grabbed my old reactor to upgrade it. 
This was a pretty big power boost and as soon as it was finished, it was already up and running. With that being done, I spent some levels putting affixes on new armor, which I upgraded back up to netherite. I was also able to upgrade the reforging table as well, which can now take in epic material. With the levels I had, I rolled some enchants for these new gears as well. For the helmet, I ended up being able to uh, max it out using the books, but for the boots, I just settled on for whatever I got. Once all that was done, it was time to challenge two withers. I had enough skulls and soul sand. I flew pretty far away and entered a ravine. Here I dug deep and cleared out an area to summon these guys. One trick I learned was to claim the chunks so the wither wouldn't blow up as many blocks. This worked like a charm and I obliterated the first wither. I used the two heart containers it dropped and uh, once the wither effect ended, I obliterated the second wither as well. This guy dropped four boar heart containers, so I ended up with six extra hearts from these guys. With all that done, I grabbed everything I needed to craft the chunk destroyer. As soon as morning hit, I had the workbench all powered up and picked up one of the most important items in the game. I set up that chunk destroyer in the mining dimension right away and was looking at how large I should make my first area. This actually took me quite a bit and I hooked up the power after. As soon as I put the chests up, items started flying through. I already had so many things in, I was lucky that I had a void upgrade so I could get rid of the uh, end stone. Plus this chunk destroyer was eating up power, it was pulling like 40k FE per tick, so I had to set a limit on it. Anyway, this thing was incredible and I hadn't even uh, enchanted it yet. I picked up most of the ancient debris and came back home to try and make this XP module for the chunk destroyer. This one needed hay bales, which meant I had to run around to different villages. It took a bit to get and I didn't realize that I messed up the recipe, so I thought it was a glitch and I moved on to go pick up all the Aldermodium ores left over. I came home and used all those ores to make myself an Aldermodium sword. Now I was actually planning on collecting the items that were valuable, but I didn't want to do the drawer system just yet. So I paused the machine and uh, just picked up whatever I needed. Until the next morning, I was basically trying to figure out how to get the XP module and I even tried uh, upgrading the cables because I thought the issue was the workbench not getting enough power. Eventually, I figured it out and put that on the chunk destroyer. I even made sure to move the XP crystal here as well. Day 64 to day 65, I remade the redstone contraption that the energizing orb uses with these redstone links from Create. This looked much cleaner and took up way less space. Once that was done, I upgraded the energizing rods to blazing tier and set that up around a single flux point. From there, I energized tons of blue ice and wanted to craft a 256k storage part. For that though, I was lacking sand and quartz, so I made a quick run to stock up on all of that. Turns out the chunk destroyer actually had tons of quartz and a little bit of sand. The XP module also gave me tons of levels, which I put into the crystal. Before making the storage part, I put speed and stack upgrades into the disc manipulator. And uh, as I was doing that, I started putting in the recipe to make an enchantment mover inside of the workbench as well. My limiting factor for that was actually obsidian. So I hopped into the cave that I made to fight the withers in. While I was down there, I found what looked like a dungeon and started breaking my way towards that place. I ended up having a real hard time finding the entrance, so it took a little while to get there. Also, since you couldn't break the dungeon blocks, I had to go around. When I finally found the entrance, I realized it was a cataclysm boss mob who I really didn't want to fight just yet. Instead, I set down a waypoint here and then warped back home. Here I smelt everything that I had and worked my way up towards an elite importer which I slapped on the back of the furnace. Speaking of furnaces, I upgraded mine to an emerald version and then to the obsidian version. With that done, I hopped down into the mines to find a bunch of lava pools and I ended up with two and a half stacks of obsidian. The next morning, I used that workbench to craft an enchantment mover and put fortune 3 on one of my pickaxes. Then I grabbed my chunk destroyer and as I was looking to transfer these enchants, it just wasn't working. Turns out silent gear items do not work for this, so I had to disenchant my pickaxe and put the enchants on a new pickaxe instead. With this, I had an efficiency 3 and fortune 3 chunk destroyer. At this point, uh, it was basically maxed out, I think. Before going back to place the chunk destroyer, I crafted a netherite chest upgrade and also more stack upgrades since I knew there was going to be ton more items. I made the actual boundary a lot bigger, but I had another issue. With those enchants, this chunk destroyer was pulling much more power. My reactor was struggling, so I had to work on the next upgrade, which was called uh, Spirited. To do that, I put the recipes in and told my system to craft me 36 spirited capacitors. Turns out I needed more or blaze rods so in the meantime i crafted some dry ice and then made a uh, blaze gate pearl i activated this pearl in the nether and began fighting tons of blazes for some reason this uh, pearl just messed up but i still got more than enough blaze rods to get the crafting of the reactor started while this was working i fit two speed upgrades into the energizer's crafter i then enchanted some of the netherite armor and uh picked up an unbelievable amount of xp from the chunk destroyer 
Before this day ended, I put an epic affix on my all the modium sword, then socketed two gems. I also managed to put like sharpness 5, looting 4, and life stealing 2 on the sword. Day 67 to day 68, I disenchanted my old netherite chest plate to get rid of repellent, and then put mending on this one as well. The mending book was from my previous sword. Once that was done, I planted even more inferium seeds and started crafting a network transmitter and receiver. The quest reward for those gave me a network card, and I was able to automate this reactor using this uh, receiver. With the network card linked up, I also put down an elite exporter and basically told it to pull out any redstone, uraninite, coal, and dry ice from the system. Before I set all that up though, I made some drawer upgrades and sprinkled all those around the main drawers that I needed. With this done, of course, I put the whitelist down for all the items I mentioned before and then also put in a crafting and regulating upgrade. The crafting upgrade would basically craft the dry ice and eventually the uraninite and the regulator would just keep 64 of each item within this reactor at all times. So now I only needed those uh, uraninite seeds. For convenience, I also crafted a wireless crafting grid and forgot I hadn't upgraded the reactor yet. So I hopped into the nether to fight another blaze gate pearl. This one worked like a charm and I burned through those waves of blaze is picking up around four stacks of blaze rods. With that, I had a spirited reactor up and running in no time, and this thing generates 100k FE per tick. Since I needed a much more stable source of food after that, I also expanded one side of the fence so I could farm more carrots behind this uh, drawer. Then I started working on upgrading my jetpack. The next tier was golden. Inside of the system, I actually managed to do it very quickly, and for future upgrades, I went to the mining dimension to grab all the uh, necessary items. I actually had to set up a compacting drawer for gold, since I now had so many. As those hundreds of gold ores were cooking, I started working on hostile neural networks. In order to get the ATM star, I would need an absolute ton of nether stars. So uh, I needed to get these loot fabricators up and running quickly. I made one simulation chamber and one loot fabricator to start. Then I crafted a deep learner and had four model frameworks. With that, I used these uh, wither skeleton drops to make more wither skeleton heads and would need to click these frameworks on a wither to start. I summoned one wither in a cave and made four wither data modules that I put into the deep learner. To make these usable though, I would need to level it up one more tier and that would take six total wither kills. The best part of this process was actually picking up the heart containers these withers drop. I ran through three withers and gained a bunch of hearts as well. So I set these two machines up, not realizing they were connected to a flux plug, which doesn't actually transfer energy, so I messed it up for a little bit. Day 70 to day 71, with all the Inferium I had, I was able to craft four Supremium Essences. I set these four up on the altar. Then, since I ran out of Uraninite, I had to go on a little mining trip. I came back up with four and was able to make a Uraninite Seed. I used a Tertium Essence on one of the farmland and planted the seed. With this, I could now grow Uraninite. To keep the reactor running forever, I made a crafting recipe for it and grabbed like three stacks of ancient debris from the chunk destroyer. Then to speed up the growth of these crops, I made nine Inferium growth accelerators and put them underneath the farmland that I was actually using. I also decided to make another teleport pad and then uh, used all these mystical fertilizers. I spammed them all on the uraninite. The next morning, I collected the quarry XP pump and went down to see all the aldamodium ores left over. I didn't mine them just yet since I wanted a high level fortune on my pickaxe, but I decided to craft an infinity range booster, which allowed me to access this crafting grip from anywhere in the overworld. To get these wither skulls and finish up the nether farm, I used the teleport pad to access the other dimension. Now this place has flight disabled and I spawned deep underground, so I had some trouble going up to the overworld. Once I did get up, I fought an apotheosis boss and tons of nether mobs. Just so I could come back without having to climb up, I uh, used slash set home on this place and then managed to get more wither skeleton heads. After a little bit of fighting, I realized that the engine of the jetpack still turns on for a little bit, so you can kind of glitch fly. Doing this, I found a much safer area to set his home and then teleported back to my base to craft a waystone. I brought the waystone back, and for convenience, I put it inside of the other dimension. After putting tons of items away, I grabbed the wither skeleton heads and was able to make a few heart canisters that I put into the amulet. I even ended up getting some good enchants which I could put on my helmet. From there, I was able to advance the data module by taking out three withers and I ended up with tons of heart containers from these guys. I think I basically maxed out on those. I also checked out the Cataclysm boss chamber and uh, saw the boss who was called the Harbinger. After some research, I figured out that uh, this guy needed a nether star to wake up. So I used it on him, woke this boss up, and was able to take it out so easily. This boss managed to not even do any damage to me at all. It dropped this witherite block thing, which could become an anvil that combines the cataclysm gear. Aside from that, I grabbed all these stone pillars in here, since they looked cool, and decided to come back home. 
Now I could get that nether star farm up and running. I put the data modules into the simulation chamber to level them up and then made a bunch of uh, prediction matrixes. This was because the simulation chamber generates two things. One of them was actually a wither prediction and the other one was just like a random junk. I set up the crafting recipe for the prediction matrixes and then expanded my fences. With that done, I moved the drawers around and realized that my simulation chamber was running out of power. Of course, this was since it was connected to a flux plug and not a flux point. I didn't realize this issue for quite a bit more and decided to do other things like farm uraninite and then made these mega torches. So because the simulation chamber spits out the junk, I also made a drawer which had a void upgrade. After a little bit, I finally fixed the power issues with these machines and could work on automating them. On both the machines, I had importers and exporters. The importers took the generalized ender prediction and wither predictions and then put them into the system. For the other machine, I just wanted to pull in anything that was being produced. Then on the other side was the exporting. For the simulation chamber, I basically wanted it to have uh, 64 prediction matrices at all times. And then for the loot fabricator, I wanted it to have the wither predictions at all times as well. With all that done, once the cables connected up, I put a cover on top of everything and then tidied that area up. Day 75 to day 76, I put more enchants onto my bow and then grabbed tons of levels from the XP crystal to roll enchants on a pickaxe. After that, I made a much larger chest for all the enchanted books and I went to see if I could make a 256k storage part. Turns out I was short some sand and quartz, but before I got all those, I crafted a structure compass. I wanted to grab tons of items from a very late game structure first. This thing was called an ancient pyramid in the other dimension. With the structure compass and some glitch flying, I was able to get to the structure very quickly. Now I couldn't break in from the top, so I had to use the entrance for this structure. And this place had some really fast spawners, so I knew I would be bombarded by mobs. I lit up some areas and broke a handful of spawners, just trying to get to the main room. In that room, I tried breaking the spawners before anything else. And uh, with that being done, I took out a ton of mobs and saw the piglet who might be the final boss of this dimension. Right now, I couldn't even do much damage to it yet. After clearing out my inventory, I grabbed the netherite blocks in the center and looted the chests. These chests all happened to be pretty incredible. They were packed with great armor, books, and some of them even had all the modium or vibranium nuggets. My backpack was filled, so I had to do more inventory management, but after that, I moved on to the other rooms. Every single room here managed to be packed, and once again, my inventory was maxed out. Turns out I'd also completed tons of bounty quests as well, so after uh, grabbing my quest rewards and some spawners, I got right outside of the pyramid and then used a slash set home command. This was because I wanted to move my waystone to this place. Well, after that entire journey, I had so many items and of course, three full spawners that I could use for later. Once morning it, I put these levels to use, enchanting my Paxel, which had fortune, and then I used that to mine all the all the volume ore in the mining dimension. In total, I got like 26 ores, which turned into 52 dust, and that allowed me to make an all the modium pickaxe. I also made a all the modium hoe for the harvesting pylon, so I would never have to worry about that anymore. With that done, I disenchanted my old pickaxes and put some of these books into this new item. As if things couldn't get any better, a wandering trader showed up and it had the perfect chest plate for me to buy. So I picked that up and upgraded it all the way to netherite. Since I now had legendary materials, I could get these uh, legendary affixes and I ended up getting one of those for the chest plate. For the sword, I put an epic affix and then I slaughtered a few gems into both those items. Day 78 to day 79, I quickly had to go find these prosperity ores so I could craft some more seeds. With a bunch of those, I did the ritual for dirt seeds and fire seeds. Those two make dirt essences and fire essences, which can craft a bunch of sand, so I planted that right away. I hopped into the nether quickly to get quartz and gas tears, and after that, I started upgrading my backpack. I got it all the way up to netherite, and then put a tier 2 stack upgrade on it. With that done, I made another quartz seed as well, and this farm was just starting to fill out a little. To help everything grow, I put a full layer of Inferium growth accelerators, and I would um, start to upgrade and place higher tier ones lower and lower. In terms of nether stars, I already had 175 from just one of these machines, so it was time to get the final upgrade on the reactor. I set up all the recipes for that and auto-crafted 36 nitro capacitors. To be safe, I also made these water seeds since our water and dirt essence could make clay. All of that was basically needed for 36 nitro capacitors. Day 80 to day 82 to be 100% safe, I decided to make these niotic capacitors first and then upgraded the energizing rods. I ended up uh, getting this entire thing to spirited tier so everything should be moving much faster. 
these nitro capacitors were very expensive and took a lot of power. Thankfully, my reactor kept up very well and I had this new reactor crafted and running pretty quickly. This beast generates 250k FE per tick, so two or three of these could basically power mostly everything in the game. From there, I upgraded the main crafter on my system to a diamond tier and went back to look for black dye so that I could craft these elevator blocks. I then made an area right underneath my base so I could uh, put a lot more of the technical machines in one little area. I didn't know about the destruction gadget just yet, so I made a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven room manually. Eventually, I made a building gadget though, so placing down blocks would be easy, but I still had to clear out the area, which was actually the annoying part. As soon as the space was made, I placed down an elevator block so I could go up and down. After that, I put down these stone pillars in the corner, then a block behind the pillar, I used the building gadget to fill the walls up with deep slate bricks. I put down some glowstone behind some iron bars because it looked cool and then uh, made a floor out of these stone tiles. After some light decorations on the floor, I bought a network receiver down here to have a secondary storage system. Day 83 to day 86, for these days, my goals were to get this area all set up. The first thing I put in here was my reactor, so I set up a little area for that and hooked it right back up to the system. I covered that area up and started working on the roof, which was quickly done with this uh, building gadget. As soon as all of that was done, I got rid of the uh, simulation chamber and loot fabricator from up top, then cleaned up that area and moved those two machines into the basement. It took a little bit of tinkering and cable hiding, but I managed to get two loot fabricators up and running this time. The next machines though were going to be a lot harder to set up, and those are going to be the enrichment chamber and like four metallurgic infusers that I wanted to fully automate. I first placed those items down in a row and then powered those guys up. With that being done, I filled those infusers up with the items they needed. So in order, it had to be coal, redstone, diamond, and refined obsidian. I made sure to put the enriched version of each into the machines, but nothing was automated just yet. During this whole time, I was fitting a bunch of speed upgrades into as many of the machines as I could. Before these days ended, I also put in muffling upgrades since I was almost going deaf by the noise. So at this point, with all the machines separated and filled up with a unique material, I took a little detour and upgraded a brass pickaxe. I also ended up grabbing a ton of nether bricks as well and uh, brew a ton of regeneration potions. With all of that, I made these hell shelves. I set them all up in the enchantment area and then started infusing a bunch of these hell shelves one by one. Doing this, I replaced the ones in my setup and had four to spare. I used those four to make an enchantment library and could now fit all of my books in there. As soon as that was done, I actually moved the entire enchantment area to some free space and uh, socketed some gems into other pieces of armor that I had. Day 88 to day 90, I made a bunch of mob swabs and placed this spider spawner down. I put a soul lantern into it which ignores light and farmed a bunch of string. I also made this brush since I needed to find a smithing upgrade as well. This one smithing upgrade to get uh, all the modium armor can only be found from suspicious clay that needs to be brushed. Turns out this clay spawns way more in ancient cities, so I made my way towards one. In here, I killed my first warden who literally didn't do any damage to me. I grabbed some quest rewards and kept taking out more and more wardens as, as I searched for this stupid clay. I only needed one. Since those wardens dropped blue hearts, I remembered to make a bunch of heart canisters and then uh, fit all those into a heart amulet. Eventually in this cave, I found the smithing upgrade which was huge. I stuck around to see if I could find any more clay but I had no luck. From there I decided to come home where I learned that there was a dark mode for the UI and duplicated the smithing upgrades. Unlike last time, I kept one safe and secure then upgraded all of my netherite armor. Now all those uh, mending enchants just happen to be a waste. Anyway, I also learned how to make these uh, frame drawers so I put some down in the basement. I connected them up to the controller and uh, put some very important items into them. The next morning I was able to auto craft the 256k storage part as well. With this beast crafted I also needed advanced storage housing now. The actual disc manipulating part was still very annoying though. While that was working I farmed tons more string, smelt a bunch of raw iron blocks and made a ton of items to help me uh, automate these mechanism machines. I started off by setting up the importers and exporters for the machines so they would be fed the enriched uh, materials continuously. The importers then bring everything out and above all that I had to set up the actual crafters which I put on top of these chests to help craft whatever I need. I finalized it by uh, putting crafting upgrades into the exporters 
and a bunch of recipes into the crafters. Then once I had the imports and exports fixed in the machines, it was good to go. I even got lucky as a wandering trader spawned who had a sharpness 10 axe, which I had to get. Day 91 to day 93, I forgot to set up the regulator upgrade on the cables and hit a lot of the cables using covers as well. Next up, I made a temporary recipe to help me craft this uh, dimensional card, but along the way, I actually ran out of ender pearls. To help me, I grabbed the mob swab as well and then went to the end dimension to grab a bunch of pearls and the enderman DNA. All that got me the dimensional card, which meant I could access my storage from wherever. Next up, I wanted to craft a 1 million storage part, but I was completely short on string. Before I focused on that, I made more network receivers and transmitters so I could set up a proper collection system for the chunk destroyer. I put down six 2x2 two two drawers and wanted it to pull certain items from the chest I had set up. So once I got the drawer set up, I put a drawer controller down and linked everything up. After that, I made tons of copper and gold upgrades first, since there were going to be an insane amount of items coming in. With all that done, I pulled all the items in from the chests into the controller using an item pipe, with a netherite upgrade in the item pipe. Also, since the drawer was hooked up to an external storage, I started getting all those items in my storage system. Things were filling up like crazy, the netherite chest was getting emptied out, and I had hundreds of thousands of items fly into my storage system. Some of these drawers actually maxed out, so I made these diamond upgrades as well. With all these new items, I had to set up new recipe for the furnace crafter. So since I had a collection system in place, I wanted another reactor on top of my old one, which would allow me to run the chunk destroyer non-stop. I had to make an extra crafter for that since I already had too many recipes. By the morning, I had started the auto craft for a new nitro reactor. In the meantime, I grabbed DNA from the wither skeleton and a blaze and then quickly went to the other dimension to get the witch DNA as well. With all that done, I needed like two more mob DNAs, one from cave creepers and one from vindicators. So I spent the rest of these days looking for that. Now with all those mob swabs, I was able to make uh, their own separate GM chicken feed which I then had to find chickens for, and then once I fed it to them, I got all the unique spawn eggs. As soon as I got all of that, my reactor finished crafting, so I used a destruction gadget to clear an area to house this bad boy. Once I made the space, I put the reactor down and hooked it up to an exporter. Then with this thing up and running, I cleaned up the area with tinted glass and elevator blocks and then hooked it up to the main flux plug. Also, I auto crafted a bunch of alloys, which was really cool to see. These two reactors meant I was generating 500k FE per tick. As soon as that was done, I fixed up more drawers in the mining dimension and came back home to make these uh, nitro energizing rods. For the mob spawner, I cut up a bunch of amethyst blocks, found a nice flat area a little bit away from my base and then started working on a contraption. Now this area was all just to house a spawner, but this thing was 9 by 9 and I just winged the height. Also the mob mashing upgrades were really expensive. The looting upgrade actually needs looting books, which is crazy to me. I set up a giant box pretty quickly using a building gadget and started putting down vector plates which are supposed to push the mob to a little kill chamber that has 9 mob masters all filled with sharpness upgrades only for now. Then I put these spawners in and made them all redstone controlled. I also put soul lanterns in so these things ignore light and then made them the uh, spawners that I needed with the eggs. I ended up grabbing one more spawner from the other dimension and then hooked all these up with those redstone links from create. The one that would activate them would be on the outside. I put uh, ender inhibitors around and then had a netherite backpack collect all the items. Eventually everything from the backpack would be put into drawers here. This backpack had a magnet upgrade, a stack upgrade, a tank upgrade, and a void upgrade. Once everything was set up, I looked at the items that would enhance the spawners and they all changed since all the mods ate. In ATM 9, to make these spawners overpowered, it was super expensive. I ended up getting rid of the Enderman spawners since they got caught on the spawners and I could just easily farm the Ender Pros in the end. Other than being slow though, these spawners work perfectly. Day 98 to day 99, I set up the collection system properly using drawers and had the XP funnel into an XP crystal. I connected those drawers to a controller and had that controller hooked up to my storage system as well. To make one of these spawners automatic, I would actually need a conduit, uh, which I really wanted to get. So I grabbed my structure compass and looked for an ocean monument. This one happened to be a pretty large one and I bulldozed my way through most of the Elder Guardians until I got to the final rooms where the mining fatigue was kind of annoying. But here, I picked up Nautilus shells from the chest. With that, I was able to turn one spawner into being automatic, as in it didn't need the player around. And of course, I chose the Vindicator one for that, so I wouldn't have to worry about emeralds. They all also had no AI, which was done by putting in golden apples. I even used some all the modium ingots to reduce the minimum spawn delay. Once that was done, I also set the chunk destroyer to clear out a gigantic area. 
Then to fix the string issue, I used two hopper body pots that grew flax. Now that I had strings, I could auto craft this 1 million storage part. I put this new part into the system and used the manipulator to get all of my old items back into it. Before the night ended, I ended up using a bunch of the looting books I had to make 9 looting upgrades and put that around uh, all the mob mashers. To end this journey off with a bang, I wanted to do a boss run. I upgraded my jetpack and player transmitter and then put fortune 5 on my pickaxe so I could pick up all of the all the Mari Amor in the mining dimension. I had almost a stack of all the Mari Amor and while all that was cooking I located a soul blacksmith and flew over to it. This was the home of the netherite monstrosity and honestly this dude was a piece of cake. I just spam attacked it and it was done in 10 seconds. It dropped a horn that could be combined on a helmet and a nice hammer. Plus there was some ancient debris laying around. There was one more boss in the nether, so I went over to a structure called the Burning Arena. Now this place had an altar of fire in the center, which I thought I had to put a nether star in, but I was wrong. Turns out I had to fight the minions on the lower floor of the structure and taking care of those two, I got a bunch of burning ashes, which could be thrown into the altar. That summoned a boss called Ignis, who looks awesome and switches to being blue after half of his health is gone. Still though, I took the guy out in a few seconds and uh, since I needed the ingots it dropped, I summoned a second Ignis as well. I picked up 6 Ignitium ingots which make the coolest looking armor. The final boss for Cataclysm I think was the Ender Guardian who I had a waystone close to the arena. I ran through the boss's structure and defeated the minions around there. Since I kept getting teleported around by the traps, I got frustrated and broke my way into the boss's lair. Now this guy looked really cool, but once again, the spam attack basically wiped it out in the shortest amount of time. It was actually pretty sad. I grabbed all the cataclysm items and then made this mechanical fusion anvil. Before combining items together, I made some smithing upgrades for Ignitium and then after that I actually combined some of the items together. Before these days ended I made a set of Ignitium armor which I wore in my cosmetic slot because it looked amazing. At this point the journey just started I wasn't even anywhere close to making the Odomodium star so if you want 200 days leave a like and let me know in the comments.